I want to turn, first of all, to something that you and some of your fellow members of Congress have been pushing for as part of stimulus packages, and that is regulations on mergers and acquisitions. And you say they shouldn't be allowed right now unless they involve the purchase of a severely distressed company. And I'm curious, first of all, what that means. What does severely distressed mean? Because obviously you're seeing a lot of companies that are in various degrees of distress right now. Yeah, I mean, what we're calling for, first of all, thank you for having me, but what we're calling for is to be sure that in this moment, in the middle of a global pandemic, that we don't allow the antitrust agencies to jam through mergers uh, that um, takes attention away from what they should be focused on, and that is uh, price gouging and hoarding and other anti-competitive behavior. What we don't want to see is market consolidation that will have implications for the economy for a very long time. We saw that after the Great Recession. There are already investors out there saying there are tremendous opportunities out there sort of licking their chops. And so what we were trying to craft is some language that says, look, unless it's a company that's in bankruptcy proceedings or actually failing, let's just pause and not allow this pandemic to be a, an opportunity to exploit uh, the acquisition of companies or, mer or to promote mergers, and instead have the agencies focus on the most immediate harm to consumers, price gouging, hoarding, other anti-competitive behavior. Hi, it's Adam Shapiro. Thank you so much Adam. for joining us. Uh, an example, though, of what you're talking about, and neither company clearly is in bankruptcy, Amazon AMC, you know, if that were a true story that Amazon's looking at acquiring the movie theater chain, you know, the, the, the movie theater business is struggling. And wouldn't what you're proposing prohibit a company that's healthy like Amazon from assisting a company that might go out of business from going out of business? No, actually, there's some language in the proposal that would allow for a waiver in, in certain circumstances. But again, we have antitrust agencies, the DOJ and the FTC, that have limited resources, limited bandwidth. And all we're saying is in the midst of a global pandemic, those resources ought to be directed at things which will protect consumers from the consequences of price gouging, of hoarding, of other anti-competitive behavior. And this is not a moment to facilitate a bunch of mergers and jam them through. And so uh, it's, not, it's not prohibiting them. It's simply saying, put them on pause, focus the attention on the greatest harm to consumers. Again, has a series of exemptions. If it's a, an actual merger which is required because a firm is failing, or in bankruptcy proceedings, though those would be exempt. But in general, it's it's calling for a pause on this action during the middle of a global pandemic that is requiring our agencies to do a lot of other very important work. What we don't want to see is what we saw after the Great Recession, tremendous consolidation in the banking and the airline industries as a result of this you know, consolidation, a lot more market power, fewer choices for consumers, higher prices, less innovation. We don't want the same thing to happen uh, after the great, after the horrible pandemic that we're in the midst of. Congressman Jessica Smith here. I know that we're hearing we could get the House version of phase four sometime early this week. Are you optimistic that you'll be able to get this proposal in that legislation, um, considering the pushback that we are seeing from some FTC commissioners and from Republican lawmakers? Yeah, I mean, the... It, we're going to continue to make the case about why this is important. This is obviously one of many proposals I'm fighting for in CARES 2. Uh, we're fighting hard to be sure that we take care of our heroes on the front lines, our first responders, healthcare workers, police officers, firefighters, making sure that there's hazard pay for people that are keeping us safe during the pandemic, making sure we support state and local governments so they can support our heroes on the front lines. Uh, additional help for our hospitals, testing, testing, testing. So, you know, I'm advocating for a number of proposals and I hope I'll get them all in, um, but we'll see what the bill looks like when we reconvene in Washington. Congressman, hi, Rick Newman. Uh, can you tell us where you see the outcome in terms of the uh, liability shield for businesses that Senate Republicans want to be in this next bill so they can reopen without uh, fearing they're going to get sued by customers or workers? Well, I mean, I think it's clear that there's a real concern uh, from the business community uh, that they have an ability to reopen safely without facing liability. Of course, the best way to uh, ensure that that doesn't happen is for safe procedures to be in place, to have a federal government and the scientific and public health community give good guidance uh, to businesses uh, and organizations 
about the way you should reopen safely. So I think that helps, you know, kind of having a standard of care as you think about uh, questions about liability. But we, you know, I think one of the difficulties is we're dealing with an administration, frankly, that hasn't provided good guidance, or when they have attempted to provide guidance, the president has squashed it and not allowed it to be shared with the American people. But any discussion about a waiver of liability has to begin with a recognition that there's a standard or protocol that must be followed uh, in order to keep people safe. And we don't even have that from the Trump administration yet. Congressman, turning to the antitrust investigation that you're leading, you recently asked Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos to come and testify. I believe last week you said you did not have a commitment from him yet. Has that changed? And just what are you hearing from Amazon? No, I mean, look, I, this investigation has been underway for about eight months. I said from the very beginning that it would be impossible for me to imagine that we would conclude the investigation without hearing from the CEOs of the large technology platforms who are often the decision makers of these large companies. Uh, this has been a very bipartisan effort. I've been in contact with all of the CEOs from the beginning of the investigation. All of them pledged their cooperation and they have been cooperating. Uh, I expect all of them will testify before the subcommittee before the investigation is concluded. The one exception to that has been Mr. Bezos, uh, who has expressed a reluctance to do so. Um, and we wrote to him in light of some a testimony given by one of the officials at his company that I think requires explanation. Uh, and we communicated to him that we expect that he would come before the committee to answer questions so that we can complete our investigation. And of course, we indicated that we expect and would hope that he would do so voluntarily, as I think any CEO would, uh, but that we were, of course, prepared, if necessary, to use compulsory process uh, to compel his attendance. And again, that was a bipartisan communication uh, from the subcommittee. Congressman, just to follow up a little bit on um, Jeff Bezos and Amazon, obviously a lot of business of Congress has been tabled for now because of the urgency of dealing with coronavirus. But likewise, Amazon, if anything, has grown in importance to a lot of Americans right now with their you know, getting things delivered at home. And I know that this particular aspect of the antitrust investigation was mostly centered on third party sellers, Amazon allegedly gathering intel from them to develop its own products. But I am curious, if there are any other um, potential abuses that you're sort of concerned about amidst this pandemic now on the part of Amazon or, or any of its competitors for that matter? Well, I think what we've seen is during the pandemic, the growing importance of the large digital platforms, which is why this investigation is so critical. Because what we want is a competitive marketplace. We want the digital marketplace to have real competition so we can make room for the next Amazon or Facebook or Google. And so that there's real competition because we know it drives down consumer prices, it creates more choices, it will protect privacy in better ways, it will promote innovation. And so the absence of competition in the digital marketplace and the kind of monopoly power or market share that some of these large technology platforms have, we know impedes innovation, reduces choices, has led to significant uh, decreases in privacy of consumers and misuse of their data. So I think if anything, the pandemic has underscored the importance of the work we're doing uh, to really understand how this marketplace works and what actions we can take to promote competition and make room for the next, next great technology platform. I want to just turn the next question very quickly to stimulus that might be coming. Nancy Pelosi allegedly working on a $750 billion package to help states with the financial uh, problems that they're facing. And yet Steve Mnuchin, Secretary of the Treasury, this morning on CNBC was saying, we will not reward states who have managed their money poorly. They're talking about public pensions, but a lot of Republican run states are in trouble. So why would the administration want to punish Republicans as well as Democratic states? Well, I mean, it's a silly argument. The states that are suffering right now, and that's all of them, are not suffering because they're mismanaged. They're suffering because of a global health pandemic. And they have essentially shut down their economy, properly so, uh, because they've followed the directions of their governors uh, to be sure they have social distancing and quarantining and the like. It's the only way you can defeat this, this pandemic. So they've done that and they should because we need to keep people alive. But as a consequence, they've seen their revenues decline dramatically. And so it's essential 
that we support states and local governments. And it's not to support some bureaucracy. It's to support healthcare workers, police officers, firefighters, those on the front line, sanitation workers, grocery clerks, people who are keeping our economy opening and keeping us safe. And uh, the notion that you know, you're know you somehow rewarding bad behavior is an absurdity. This is making certain that our states and cities can be in a position to reopen economies to get the country back to work. You cannot do that without police officers and firefighters and first responders. And the idea in some states that have county hospitals, that they're, they're preparing to lay off healthcare professionals because they don't have the money in the middle of a global pandemic is obscene. And so Mnuch, Mr. Mnuchin, Secretary Mnuchin is wrong. Mr. McConnell is wrong. The federal government has a responsibility to help the heroes on the front line of this pandemic. And the, the House Democrats are fighting hard to make sure that, that is reflected in the CARES 2 that we're working on right now. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.